श्री महागणाधिपत नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा देहम प्राणमपींद्रियाला बुद्धि शून्य विदु स्त्री बालांधजोपमास्वि भ्राता भृशं वादि मयाशक्ति विलासकमोह संहारिणे तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नम इदम श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त सो तू दिस तू इट कनेक्ट्स दिस वर्स विद एर्लियर वर्स सो स्त्री बालांधजोपमास्वि रोपमा तू अहम सो इन द एर्लियर वर्स इट इज सेड that awareness absolute which is in you you need not even search for it it is pouring out through every one of the sense organs and also organs of action it is the origin of the kriya shakti the motivity the power of motivity that is expressed through this body mind and also it is the origin of all kinds of cognition aham janami When you see a form, aham janami. When you hear a sound, aham janami. So like this, this experience of I know, I know, I know. So instantly we know things. The moment we wake up, so the uh, the source for that knowingness, the so the power of cognition, vijnana shakti. So that is that has its origin in the awareness absolute reflecting in the human heart. and so that is the atma to but you see it is so obvious there is no reason to make a mistake about atma but still people make a mistake there is a law a murphy's law i think if something can go wrong something can can that can is important something can go wrong the law says it will go wrong so if there is a possibility of making a mistake with reference to anything then people end up making that mistake what to say about atma so uh, therefore people do all kinds of mistakes to on the other hand so to on the other hand means how people fail to recognize the most obvious truth of atma that is being described in this verse so uh, so it begins with deha you see the deha dehatma vada we say charvaka is a dehatma vadi and so we we denounce him or we refute the charvaka and at the end of the day we are the dehatma vadis really speaking it is easy to pinpoint somebody and then um, so uh, you target that person so that uh, you feel good about it a dehatma vadi is targeted <laughs> he is not around anywhere so we have, we feel very happy this is how the bookish knowledge continues all professional vedanta so but the, but having done so much of uh, refutation of the dehatma vadi where do we stand we are the worst dehatma vada people so we have to we have to address that so you have to investigate the very idea of the body so you have to investigate it bhagwan buddha said body is not a physical thing you should not think that there is a physical thing separate from mental idea this notion should go away because mental idea and the physical thing they are counterparts what you say physical thing is the counterpart of the mental idea 
and what you say mental idea is the counter part of the physical thing one is supposedly outside the other is supposedly inside but shankara in chandogya bhashya 7th adhyaya if you have patience please read it he explains in good detail that ya eva bahya ta eva manasa there he is using strilinga for whatever reason ya ha vyakta ya har whatever and ya ha manas bahya ta eva manasa so whatever you call the mental idea it is no different from the physical thing and the physical thing is no different from mental idea and uh, therefore what you call body it is physical but i i i challenge i give it as a challenge you all have all have a scientific background you think about it body is a, is a, uh, a product of millions of sensations so touch touch sensation you know as i sit here all over the body wherever i feel the body i feel it through the sense of touch the touch sensations they are constantly flowing into the brain and getting integrated throwing up an idea called body that's why this is the secret of body body is an idea which is the result of integration of millions of sensations the sense the sense of touch sensations from every pore the sensations are pouring into the brain and there they get integrated throwing up an idea called body that's why you can block the sensations flow thereby removing the idea of that part of the body you block the sensations from the leg and uh, god forbid even to say that i feel unhappy they amputate the leg just to block the sensations and they amputate the leg and now the person doesn't have a leg but he still feels that he has a leg it is called phantom limb so without leg you can have the feeling of a leg because what you call leg is only a mental idea and uh, having the leg you may not feel the leg without having the leg you can feel the leg so ya ha bahya ha ta ha manasa ha ya eva manasa ha ta ha bahya ha therefore as bhagwan buddha says very perfectly body is an idea in the mind it is nothing more than that so people have to you see vedanta is a philosophy it's a big science it is so as a student of vedanta if you believe that uh, flower is outside and uh, flower is outside and it is real if that is the way you proceed about it then uh, you you are not doing anything called vedanta there is no flower outside outside whatever is is what you make of it flower is the counterpart of counterpart in the mind of whatever is outside murtigetyeva satyam vacharmanam vikarunamathe therefore so body is an idea in the mind and uh, you see you you first you tell me people say whether the bo- mind appears in the body or body appears in the mind which is first you think of the body then body comes into the picture so mind is first not body so as long as you think that there is a body and there is a mind inside that and there is an atma inside that mind so long you will not know atma you have to get that copernicus revolution it is it is entirely wrong body is in the mind as an idea and mind is a movement in the awareness absolute it is the opposite it is the copernicus revolution has to happen and so without that uh, you will not get the idea therefore body is a wave it is a movement in the mind it is a wave that is how bhagavan buddha described and therefore body is never a thing so you have to investigate the idea of the body so surely there must be the mind to conceive the idea of the body that's why when you do not think of the body so 
there is no body so a body without a mind cannot be my body suppose the person is no more <laughs> he is dead the body is there it it is not a body we call it a body based on the habit so it is not my body there is no my body there why why there is no my body because there is no mind therefore my body is invariably absent there is no my body the the idea of my body is invariably absent when the mind is in abeyance when the mind is not there it is suspended the my body is just absent and also my my body is absent when the mind is deeply engaged in thoughts and feelings when you are deeply engaged in any thought suppose you are counting money not 1 dollar bills that doesn't engage fully maybe 100 dollar bills you are counting then it engages fully then there is no body suppose uh, the goalkeepers uh, the soccer matches they play the person who is putting the goal he doesn't have a body he has only the ball and the goal there is no body for him so when you are deeply engaged in any given feeling there is no body therefore body is an idea in the mind and how can body which is just an idea you give it a status of a of a thing and then make it atma so like that people make huge mistakes and therefore all these mistakes are listed not all some of them are listed and they are getting refuted that is the spirit of the word tu so deham pranam apindriyanyapi we have covered that chalam buddhincha chala buddhi is chala is kshanika so kshanika vijnana vada it is one of the sects of buddhism one of the sects of the buddhism you should not confuse between buddhism and buddha they are two different things so for example swami ramatirtha said what christ taught whatever he has taught and what is practiced in the name of christianity there is a big difference between the two so much so ramatirtha was compelled to call uh, the religion as chirchianity that is the name he gave to it and uh, what shri krishna taught and uh, whatever religion that we practice in the name of shri krishna there is no connection at all absolutely no connection same is the case with rama same is the case with buddha buddha is an atmavadi he is not a shunyavadi he is not a kshanika vijnanavadi he is an atmavadi he made a few remarks here and there based on a context for example a shishya asked him at morning 5 o'clock at morning 5 he used to come out from his kuti uh, and then a shishya waits upon him to ask a question because he used to maintain silence and so to ask a question he the student waits upon him and asks bhagwan so the, some name uh, they used to call him bhagwan is there god a student asked so then he said there is no god and he walked away and next day morning another student asked bhagwan is there no god then he said bhante yes there is god and he said and walked away so he there is a reason for it the, all that is explained i don't remember the details so based on such a stray remarks which are taken in isolation instead of taking all of them in unison take them in isolation and then uh, say he did not uh, he is a godless person like that they have they have uh, decided that is wrong he is an atmavadi but uh, all the buddhists may not follow what he says if buddhists follow what he says there will not be four kinds of buddhism there would be only one kind of buddhism but buddhists do not follow exactly whatever he says that's why there are four kinds of buddhists and one of them is kshanika vijnanavadi he is a very powerful man among all the four and so shankara mentions him kshanika vijnana so what is atma mind in flux vijnana is mind for them vijnana is mind vijnana is mind there is nothing more than mind that is the innermost 
once you have reached the mind that is the end of the story mind is the innermost and hence mind becomes atma whatever is the innermost is the atma and so this mind it is in flux these buddhists are great thinkers and in a way they are great scientists also because they are the people who who understood this the the the, the, the uh, principle of a flux flux frequency means constant motion very quick motion and therefore uh, it, it it is a, there is a frequency they talk of frequency also they are the first people to consider this uh, to have this vision of something which is in flux and having some frequency and all that they are the first people for example this bulb which is glowing which appears continuous it is not continuous there is nothing continuous in this world you assume that there is continuity which itself is a bondage of time there is nothing continuous in this world suppose i pour pebbles from a vessel i pour pebbles are they continuous or discontinuous discontinuous you can easily see that you can see gap even they are falling between one pebble and the other you can see the gap i pour sand is it continuous or discontinuous discontinuous right i pour water now is it continuous or discontinuous discontinuous because water molecules fall one after the other there is always a gap between one molecule and the other molecule same way the bulb is also discontinuous in india the bulb it goes on and off 50 times a second that is our frequency 50 50 i don't know what is the frequency here here it must have some other frequency so ours is russian frequency so you must have a different frequency we decided everything based on russia what to do america was supporting pakistan from day one what kind of a foreign policy they had i don't know they were supporting pakistan it, from day one pakistan was a dictatorship and they were supporting pakistan we were democrats from day one so we were not supported by america uh, in those days so you cannot uh, have the advantage of uh, uh, american technology therefore we have to rely upon somebody or the other so so we relied upon russia so we got 50 50 is our frequency anyway that is a digression <laughs> so therefore it get gives the idea of continuity there is no continuity in the in quantum physics there is nothing continuous and in vedanta there is nothing continuous continuous is mithya because continuity is the notion given by the sense of time sense of time is mithya it is a mental category and therefore continuity is a mental category it is a mithya and because we take it as real we are bound by that we are bound by that how badly people are bound by continuity you remind me sometime i will tell you how now i am not going to spend any time on that therefore this mind in flux is the atma then that means what the mind is now bleep 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 so when there is a bleep there is mind and then only atma is there and between one bleep and another bleep there is no mind and therefore there is no atma very interesting so so shankara etc they question this they question how you see this flower the flower is red now that is one cognition now this cognition how this cognition happened flower is one bleep and that bleep happened and it is dead because momentary and then a gap in which there is no there is no there is nothing it is shunya the gap next moment another bleep red now what is it that connects the redness with the flower and the flower with the red what is it that connects there must be something to connect there is nothing to connect no no the flower red flower the earlier bleep flower is connected with the next bleep red how you connect because in between there is shunyam 
no, no, something is there to connect. That something is Atma, and hence it must be different from the bleep bleep of the uh, mind. Therefore, uh, the argument is not valid. I gave you a very brief uh, argument that is enough to uh, refute the Chalam Buddhim, the uh, Kshanika Vijnanavada. And uh, Shunyam Viduhu, there is a Shunyavadi. You see, there is, among Buddhists, uh, there are uh, um, big differences. One person says, Bahyarthavadi, the outside object is real, the mind is unreal. And then, uh, antara, antarartavadi, the inner mind is real, outside object is unreal. That is the Kshanika Vijnanavadi. Then there is another uh, third uh, kind of Buddhist who says, both Bahya and Antara are real. The mind in flux is real, the object is also real. So, he is uh, 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 the third kind of Buddhist. And the fourth, he says the outside object is not there, it is unreal, and the inner mind is also unreal. Shunyam Tattvam. The void is the truth. Then Shankara asks, okay, void is the truth. So, esse ist percipi. That is a important law. So, void is the truth, you say. Then there must be a Chaitanyam, a consciousness, which understands void and declares that the void is the truth. It is like somebody said, there is no tongue in my mouth. I don't have tongue. That is somebody said. Now, you tell me, to say that I don't have tongue, what do you conclude? There is a tongue or not now? There is a tongue. Otherwise, how will he be able to tell there is no tongue? Similarly, shunyam tatvam. Somebody says, so therefore, there is a conscious being who understands the shunyam and who asserts the shunyam as the truth. There must be a conscious being. It is like saying the thing happened midnight, 12 o'clock, in dark, pitch darkness, this thing happened. There was nobody uh, around when this thing happened. That is the witness given by a person in the court. Then the judge told the witness, Sir, to be right, you must be wrong. You got it? If you can be right, what you said can be the truth, only if you are wrong. How he must be wrong? He must be there. He must be there. Then only what he says is correct. Suppose he himself is not there, then what he says has no basis. Similarly, shunyam tattvam is valid only when you are wrong, because you must be there. <laughs> Therefore, it is a self-contradictory. The sakshi for shunya must always be there. Shunya cannot come and they declare, I am the shunya, I am the tattvam. The shunya cannot declare. The sakshi of the shunya should declare. Anyway, so shunyavada is not acceptable. Here, Sri Bala Andha, I have covered that. Then there is one more word, jada. So, Jada is Vijnanavadi. Vijnanavadi is called Jada. Shunyavadi is also called Jada. Jada means dumb. In India, we call it dumb. Here they may call it dumb, but in India, we call it dumb. So, from childhood, we were calling it like that only. So, you have to bear with me. So, I too don't feel good to say dumb. Dumb, somehow, it, I get, I don't even get the meaning of dumb. Anyway, so, Jada means he is a dumb guy. How can you say he is dumb? Because he says, Atma is Manaha, in flux only. Mind is insentient, mind is not sentient. Therefore, by saying mind is the Atma, he has joined the category of the insentient himself, because he is the Atma. Therefore, he is the Jadavadi. <laughs> Tell Shulyavadi, he is also Jadavadi. Because we ask, Shunyam, is it sentient or insentient? <laughs> so, it cannot be sentient because he doesn't accept Sakshi. Therefore, Shunyam must be insentient only. And so, he is also Jadavadi. Therefore, all these people, uh, they are uh, confused. So, Bhranta, they are deluded. So, Bhrusham Vadinaha, but they argue a lot. 
भृशम वादिन दे आर्ग्यू वेहमेंटली सो यू सी जनरली महात्मा दे डोंट एंटर इन टू डिबेट्स एंड आर्ग्यूमेंट्स दे कीप क्वाइट दे रिमेन साइलेंट and if the other person is a, has an open mind and if he wants to know something then the mahatma will open and say something the mahatmas want to engage in debates because they, they don't have any pressure to convert the other person they don't have any pressure they don't have the pressure to impress anybody they need not they don't want to impress anybody why should we impress anybody if i try to impress the other person the other person will defeat me the first moment because he refuses to be impressed if he guesses that i am trying to impress him he becomes a stoic try try to impress me so how am i going to impress him other are he will sleep then how am i going to impress him uh, therefore so generally mahatmas don't they don't enter into debates and uh, they don't try to impress anybody they open the mouth only when the there is a genuine uh, jignasa the desire to know when they they feel that the other person has an open mind they they say something sometimes even when the other person has no open mind it is doubtful whether he has an open mind or not but still uh, give benefit of doubt maybe he has an open mind hopefully or at least he let him listen to the truth so that he will go home immediately he may not accept his ego is there it may it won't allow him to receive the truth properly but at least after going home or some day he will think are that the person tell, told like that what was he saying like that he will think and that gives him a chance to know that's why out of love mahatmas this say otherwise they won't uh, involve in the arguments whereas uh, these people one who uh, you see we have a proverb in telugu in pot uh, when it is empty it makes a lot of noise when the pot is full it makes no noise these people they don't have the truth with them therefore they make a lot of noise drusham vadina ha they are uh, uh, deluded how come they are deluded maya shakti vilasa kalpita mahavyamoha that is the delusion so up to that it is the uh, that is elaboration or the commentary on the word bhranti bhrantaha they have bhranti delusion so what is this delusion how you please explain it maya shakti vilasa kalpita mahavyamoha that is the delusion mahavyamoha ha eva bhranti hi tasya samharine so the bhagwan ishvara destroys that delusion yamoha is delusion and he will destroy it so first you have to understand what is the delusion and the delusion you see bhranti it has its origin in avidya avidya bhranti or avidya moha they are the two words avidya avidya doesn't hurt for example in sleep you are you have avidya you do not know anything and it doesn't hurt you it doesn't even come in the way of uh, the the experience of uh, avidya it accounts for the experience of nothingness that is avidya you experience nothing the experience of nothingness is there that is sleep and also the experience of well being and a deep relaxation all those things are there and also you are really really happy in sleep therefore avidya it doesn't hurt you in fact avidya it is a, it, it is like a bliss of the sleep associated with avidya is bliss of the sleep therefore avidya doesn't hurt you but when you wake up that avidya it sprouts in the form of moha now this moha will hurt you that's why in in sleep there is avidya but there is no samsara bondage is not there when you wake up so then why should we get rid of avidya so you have to get rid of avidya because when you wake up the avidya it sprouts and what you have now you means not you people generally i am saying so now what we have is 
moha moha is a delusion it is like the the, the you do not know that it is raju it is a uh, rope you do not know that it is a rope so by not knowing that it is a rope you are not going to be hurt by that by not knowing you are not hurt but by not knowing that it is a rope you superimpose a serpent on it that is the moha without avidya there cannot be any moha suppose you know it is raju then the question of superimposition of serpent doesn't arise therefore avidya of raju is the cause of the delusion of a serpent a superimposition of a serpent therefore avidya leads to moha and what is this avidya maya maya eva avidya you see maya has two levels in fact it is only one level but there is two jiva ishvara we are talking about ajnanam you know so in ajnana i am different from the whole whole is ishvara and i am different from the whole that is ajnana so in that ajnana level when there is a division between jiva and ishvara so the maya shakti avidya is a shakti you see the ignorance and the blind belief superstition they have a peculiar energy you can see that all over the world whereas the wisdom truth doesn't have that kind of energy a person who knows the truth he remains uh, uh, almost dull and quiet whereas this this believer oh my god the amount of uh, nuisance he creates in the society is endless he has so much energy when you look at the energy of the ignorant guy he will be surprised truth doesn't seem to have that much energy <laughs> really so that's why don't you underestimate the power of avidya the maya is a maya shakti trigunatmika maya which is the upadana for for this entire jagat jagat is created from the maya shakti of the parameshwara therefore maya shakti under the command of ishvara helps ishvara to create the universe the same maya shakti at the level of the jiva it becomes the boss of the jiva it takes the uh, jiva into its command it commands the jiva and makes the jiva bound by the samsara therefore maya shakti in ishvara is the power of creation the same maya shakti in jiva is the dangerous state of ignorance avidya that is the maya shakti therefore maya is avidya and so it has a power avidya has power in fact vidya doesn't have that much power only avidya has power the person who knows the truth he talks politely in one or two sentences whereas the ignorant man he will give lectures hours together he will give lecture and he is not even tired of his lecture some power is there in avidya <laughs> that is what shankara means maya shakti and this avidya the type of moha it creates it is endless and the moha is so variegated Uh, so colorful moha it is Mo- vilasa the moha the ignorance that is prevalent in the society is so colorful and uh, uh, so you see uh, somebody says ganesha is uh, drinking milk oh my god <laughs> and then somebody says uh, so uh, from the from the photo chapatis are coming out <laughs> i asked why not pizzas <laughs> i know the answer also you know why why pizza won't come because the guy doesn't know what is a pizza he knows only chapati <laughs> if uh, the same photo is uh, here then pizzas would come but there they, they, nobody knows what is a pizza he is a village guy and so only chapatis come out of a... so the, it is, this is the vilasa it means variety attraction so much attraction for all that maya shakti vilasa and uh, it puts in place this moha it is moha delusion a moha 
वाइड स्प्रेड डिल्यूशन व्यामोहा डीप रूटेड डिल्यूशन सो सी द डिल्यूशन पीपल हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड इट सो बिकॉज ऑफ द डिल्यूशन दे टेक द नॉन सेल्फ एस द सेल्फ and uh, that is one kind of delusion now body is the self when body is the self uh, so catering to the needs of the body becomes the religion and body is the god body is the temple i mean body is the god and uh, serving the body is the religion that is the worship so huge delusion it is and uh, also when you take the non self as the self the real self is forgotten the chance to know the real self is out now so the self of forgetfulness is the darkness and uh, there is moha moha is uh, another kind of moha you see moha the delusion it makes us believe that happiness is in the objects of the world what a moha it is there is happiness in the car there is happiness in the uh, theater there is happiness in what we eat what we drink so the objects inanimate objects insentient objects you see happiness is the character of a sentient uh, entity sentience one must be sentient to be happy whereas insentient things how can ha- how can they have happiness you see the the amazon.com uh, warehouses are called fulfillment house it is called <laughs> that is the name given to it the warehouse is an old fashioned name so they don't call it warehouse they call it fulfillment house so fulfillment comes from the things that are inside stacked inside from their fulfillment comes how, how they can give fulfillment to, to you fulfillment must be in you the sentient guy we will have fulfillment or the opposite a, 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 a insentient object cannot give fulfillment it cannot give happiness but uh, uh, so there is so much delusion in the society so when we become attached to the things of the world we get absorbed in them as we get absorbed in the things of the world we forget the self and uh, so uh, and also it is people this vyamoha i am just explaining vyamoha i'll finish it and move forward with that my verse will be over so uh, so now i am uh, i am in the <laughs> landing <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> anyway so the you see what happens is uh, uh the moha the delusion is uh, that you identify with the external that is the greatest delusion like uh, there is a home there and you identify with it say it is my home that is called identification called samsarga dhyasa so you identify with the external really speaking the chetana the chaitanyam the awareness is like this light the light illuminates everything here but it doesn't identify with anything and uh, it is not attached to any of these things even while illuminating all of them and also by illuminating the dakshinamurti stotram book it doesn't become pious and by illuminating some silly thing it doesn't become unpious non pious even while illuminating everything it remains beyond everything it is a immanent yet transcendent that is what the light is the chaitanyam is also like that the awareness is like that it is immanent everything shines only because of the chaitanyam but chaitanyam doesn't stick with anything it remains unattached that is the truth but because of this vyamoha you feel you are attached so that is the vyamoha a huge bondage it is so you identify with the external you see mahatmas they find it difficult to identify with anything they cannot identify with anything they travel in a car they don't identify with the car 
they live in a home they don't identify with the home they talk with people with love without getting attached to them so they walk in and walk out like wind blows in and blows out they don't get attached to anything whereas samsaris the worldly people in their uh, ignorance and in their delusion they get identified with everything they identify with uh, a diamond ring they, uh, such a silly thing as a diamond ring uh, they identify with and they identify with a home they identify with a car they identify with a ball point pen or uh, some other pen uh, which has some golden nib or whatever so pretty much with they identify with the shoelaces or what shoes they identify with a the necktie they identify with pretty much everything there is, uh, uh, virtually there is nothing with which they don't identify that is the vyamoha so identification with the external uh, it is in the process as you get identified with all kinds of the things of the world so you forget the real self forgetfulness of the real self it is the greatest injury greatest injury forgetfulness is the greatest injury all the calamities of life flow from that forgetfulness of the self so life is put on such a wrong track because what is life action and thought that is what life is action and thought and in the when you identify with the non self thereby forgetting the self there is no basis for action and thought there is no basis for reaction there is no basis for thought whatever you do will bind you whatever you think is wrong and whatever mind desires is exactly what you don't need that is what i mean when i say there is no basis for thought so it is a huge delusion and maya shakti throws that net upon us and even shri krishna says in gita devi yesha guna mayi mama maya duratyaya very difficult to overcome this maya pamevaye prapadyante maya metam tarantite there is only one way to overcome this maya this is where bhakti and jnanam though the different words but they are not really different eh? only the approach is slightly different vastu is one and the same so there here bhakti and jnanam they merge like ganga and yamuna merge so mamevaye prapadyante you have to surrender self surrender remind me sometime i will explain to you what is self surrender so sharanagati you have to do and as you do sharanagati of ishvara so you will be able to overcome this maya mamevaye prapadyante prapatti is sharanagati so maya metam tarantite that's why it is said so the guru murti the the preceptor he points out the way he says dear son don't get attached to the things of the world you move in the world so as shri ramakrishna says be in the world but don't keep the world in your mind in you be like boat is in water but water should not be in the boat so be in the world let not the world be in you so be like the boat in water so um, so be in the world but don't be of the world that is how ramakrishna prabhupada used to say therefore so that kind of a, a, a preceptor's advice it is enough to destroy that vyamoha vyamoha samharine and then when you surrender to ishvara so ishvara in the form of atma is always there so be a light unto yourself be humble hearted and surrender to ishvara don't be a worldly person keep the worldliness away worldliness is a disease bhava roga they call it it's a disease and sharanagati to ishvara will cure us of this disease called worldliness and so maya shakti vilasa kalpita mahavyamoha samharine so we have to surrender to ishvara we have to take the light of wisdom from the preceptor and ultimately 
we have to be a light unto ourselves through the progression so ishvara guru atma ishvara guru atma iti murti bheda vibhagine that is the way in which this delusion is is destroyed so with that i will conclude this verse and proceed for the next verse rahu grasta divakarendu sadrusho maya samachadanat sanmatra karano pasamharanato yo bhut susupta puman ಪ್ರಾಗಸ್ವಾಪ್ಸಮಿತಿ ಪ್ರಬೋಧ ಸಮೇ ಯತ್ಯಭಿಜ್ಞಾತೆ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಮೂರ್ತ ನಮ ಇದ ಶ್ರೀದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ it gives us a, an important analysis of the state of sleep the experience of sleep swami ramatirtha he was speaking in san francisco in 1902 or 03 he addressed a group of scholars in the university here he told them the, he pointed out a, a fundamental flaw in the philosophy of uh, aristotle and ptolemy aristotle and other philosophers socrates is a jnani socrates is an atma jnani so he praises the glory of socrates but socrates a student of socrates is uh, plato not at all i'm sorry plato and aristotle he he talked about plato and aristotle they are great philosophers but uh, there is a, a fundamental flaw in their philosophy what is that that is a uh, they have not taken the sleep state into account they based their entire philosophy on the experience of waking state only and the dream state they have not considered they said they, they did not pay attention to dream state because a dream is known as unreal by everybody even a child knows that the dream is unreal and then uh, uh, the sleep state what is there in sleep state there is nothing in sleep state it is some silly useless experience whatever may be the reason they did not pay attention to that and now the entire philosophy is based on the waking state experience that is how they ended up as dualists great thinkers but what he said is he, their thinking power is not less he questioned their datum he said their datum is insufficient incomplete datum it is like you perform a scientific experiment and uh, make note of all the observations but the observations are incomplete so with that incomplete datum if you come, uh, come to a conclusion the conclusion will be wrong that is what happened so in our life also you see we put so much emphasis on the waking state remember the uh, total emphasis why so much total emphasis in the waking state and uh, we do have the experiences of dream but we never learn from the dream there is a, a topic called swapna vivekaha so when time comes i will explain it uh, in some detail so that is the discernment about the swapna you have to understand oh swapna is unreal you dismiss it like that but uh, but uh, okay it is unreal but uh, uh, how, how does swapna operate what is the dynamics associated with this swapna and uh, uh, so then uh, if you do that uh, discernment properly then uh, you can apply that illustration to the waking state and draw stunning conclusions out of it but we don't do that it is an experience a dream is an inter- very interesting experience it is and uh, also students of vedanta vedanta and the spirituality good meaning people they ask uh, and now this kind of experience i had what does it mean like that they ask 
so what answer can we give because mind is a very it has infinite potential and uh, ajnana is like that it ca- it can come out with uh, unimaginably varieties imaginations experiences mind can create any kind of experience so you cannot rationalize every single experience except by saying that mind is capable of imagining anything and everything therefore only one principle whatever is a psychological is unreal therefore please think about it and come out of it that is the only answer we can give therefore such stray experiences you pay so much attention and try to make some sense out of it but uh, why don't you pay attention to the dream experience it is a recurring experience what does it mean what is its uh, significance so we have to do that unfortunately we don't do that therefore we give all together too much or un- undue emphasis on jagrat avastha and thereby miss the whole point of dream and sleep and in this verse we have an occasion uh, to to understand the experience of sleep now shankara he gives an illustration so the illustration is very interesting illustration it is the eclipse of the sun and also moon you see the observer is standing on the earth observer sai and the sun moon comes in the way that is solar eclipse and then uh, the observer is on the earth and uh, moon is there and uh, the earth comes between the sun and the moon the earth comes between the you should not say the sun comes between earth and moon sun doesn't come between earth and moon <laughs> earth comes <laughs> between moon and the sun basic things only uh, so when earth comes between the moon and the sun the moon doesn't uh, shine anymore because earth becomes an obstacle for the light of the sun and therefore the observer sai sees the moon or eclipse these are the two eclipses and the eclipse is in the form of a shadow uh, on the uh, sun and the moon and the shadows uh, they are uh, called uh, graha graha is not planet you should not translate it as planet if you translate it as planet you will have trouble because moon is not a planet moon is a graha grunhati iti graha it it exerts uh, gravitational pull that's why it is called graha so moon exerts gravitational pull that is how the the tides of oceans is there because of the gravitational pull of the moon therefore moon is graha graha is the right word for moon but if you translate graha as a planet then it is wrong word it doesn't uh, fit so uh, and bhumi is a planet but in the nine grahas bhumi is not put for whatever reason sun is not a planet sun is a star but in navagrahas sun is there which is fine because sun exerts wonderful gravitational pull therefore graha word should not be translated as planet if you translate it as planet you will end up in all kinds of difficulties and also there are two grahas which are only shadows why then why they should be called graha maybe graha pravaha patitva tu graha ichchyate i don't know so they call it graha for whatever reason they are shadows only and they know that they are shadows that's why they call them as chaya graha rahu and ketu don't you worry about the puranic story that goes with those names that is not relevant here so they are they are correctly recognized as a chaya graha so as shadows they will not be able to exert any gravitational pull therefore in that sense they are not grahas but they are in the whole bunch of grahas therefore they are also called grahas they are only shadows it is enough to say chaya but they are in the bunch of grahas they are called chaya grahas they are the rahu and ketu that is the story of eclipse there is nothing like a snake eating um, and all that there is nothing like serpent eating and all that so that story there is no significance also to that story 
in bhagavatam that story is mentioned and said this story is not uh, relevant there is only chaya like that it is said in bhagavatam itself it which itself is a purana anyway so that is the illustration here rahugrasta divakarendu sadrushah in sleep your knowingness is suspended there is no knowingness anymore so the vijnana shakti it it goes into uh, oblivion it is like something has covered that vijnana shakti so atma is the sachit atma is sachit in that sachit don't bother about ananda ananda is associated with chit uh, and it is associated with sat also in sleep your ananda is not uh, eclipsed you are in, in ananda only therefore there is no eclipse for ananda in fact ananda blossoms in sleep you are wonderfully happy in sleep therefore there is eclipse for the chit only and therefore you remain as sat you see sat is a uh, sat you, you look at it like this the being shines as the knowing and uh, ananda which is love is the fragrance of the being take it like that like fragrance of the flower so uh, therefore it is the sat shining as the knowing now sat remains sat but the knowing aspect of the sat it is blocked it is covered veiled that is the, it gets eclipsed like the sun remains sun sun continues to shine even during the eclipse sun continues to shine but the shining of the sun is eclipsed by rahu so moon is also shining you take it like that moon is also shining but moon is there shining means moon is there but it doesn't shine because eclipsed by moon is eclipsed by rahu take it like that don't bother about ketu there is only rahu what about ketu why shankara doesn't talk about ketu you don't go into that kind of illustration analysis illustration whatever little says you pick it up and here one more thing has to be added about the illustration that is you see what is it that is eclipsed or covered up the shadow it covers up the sun that is not correct so ghanachanna drishti ghanachanna markam like that there is a verse in bhagavatam so the shadow it doesn't cover up the sun sun is too big too shining too far away to cover up it covers up your vision you see they say the clouds cover up the sun clouds do not cover up the sun ghanachanna drushti they cover up your eyesight <laughs> they don't cover how can they cover up the sun if they go anywhere near the sun they get evaporated to nothingness so they don't cover up the sun they cover up your your vision they cover up ghanachanna drushti ghanachanna markam bhavayati by mistake that is the ignorance therefore moon can it cover up the sun what do you mean by moon covering up the sun no question of moon covering up the sun moon becomes ashes it evaporates it evaporates into gas and it will go into the infinite space if moon goes anywhere near the sun recently one comet went near the sun how much near you know a million miles near not far it went million miles near you should not say million miles far for sun million miles is near and that comet the moment it went close by million miles it just evaporated into pieces and became gases and merged in the atmosphere in the in a space anyway therefore manaha the ignorance the ignorance doesn't cover up the atma it covers up the vision only don't ask whose vision there is no who it covers up the truth by covering up the vision it doesn't cover up the atma atma will be like sun ever shining so these are some of the details of the illustration so rahugrasta divakarendu sadrushah atma you are the atma 
and that atma is the same as guru guru satma and your atma are one and the same and uh, that is also the atma of ishvara so all are one so this atma now this atma is apparently covered up it is the vision that is covered up but we still we say atma is veiled like the sun is way covered like that now then the atma the chit aspect of the atma is covered so um then uh, so you abide as pure sat san matra sat the being that is the sleep now here a question sleep is shunya why do you say sleep is being you see sleep is asat it must be asat means shunya there is nothing but we are it's not saying nothing we are saying sat and sat alone san matra so this aspect this is the occasion to discuss it in some detail so you see why do you say sleep is non existence sleep is an asat non existence we are saying sleep is being existence why do you say because uh, sleep is a lapse it's a lapse so the waking state all experiences chaitanya etc is going on and suddenly there is a lapse lapse of what lapse of atma no wrong it is not lapse of atma it is only lapse of memory sleep is the lapse of memory because and this is one point and another thing who has slept who who is that that went into sleep the who is a dangerous thing it is you say so mr johnson he is a mr johnson in the waking state now can you say mr johnson has gone into sleep you cannot say that because there is no mr johnson in this sleep there is no mr johnson and uh, if the truth of the waking state is mr johnson suppose the waking state the truth of the waking state were to be johnson then uh, there is no mr johnson in the sleep and therefore mr johnson cannot be connected to the sleep experience he cannot be connected because he is not there in the sleep you know but he is getting connected are you following my line of argument and this guy saw a dream in dream he was not mr johnson in dream he was a king okay and in dream mr johnson is not there king is there and all the dream experiences are the experiences of the king but then when mr johnson wakes up he says my dream how come mr johnson is connected with the dream experience how come mr johnson is connected with the sleep experience what is the connection means there is a commonality between the nothingness of the sleep the the king of the dream and mr johnson of the waking state there is a commonality therefore mr johnson is not the truth the commonality of mr johnson the king and the nothingness is the truth are you getting it and that commonality is called sakshi therefore are you mr johnson or are you the sakshi of the persona called mr johnson what are you now you are the sakshi of the persona called mr johnson then but then i feel that i am mr johnson yeah there you are making a mistake in identifying with a name and uh, you create you imagine a persona and you are identifying with the persona you are making the mistake you should not make that mistake are you enjoying sleep or not of course i enjoy sleep then that i which enjoys sleep cannot be mr johnson take care are you getting it yeah so you are not mr johnson mr johnson is the persona imagined by mind the movement of mind 
produces a persona called Mr. Janssen. The persona is entirely false. It is a product of the mind and hence it is false. Then what is the truth? So the witness of the persona is the truth. That's why if you abide as egoic awareness, you are the person which is falsehood. But if you abide as the choiceless and egoless awareness, that is already the truth. And that is the truth which is also the witness to the experience of sleep. Therefore sleep is uh, not the lapse of the Sakshi. In sleep also we, we accept the Sakshi. If there is no Sakshi in sleep, uh, next day morning you cannot talk of the sleep experience at all. You are able to talk of the sleep experience because you are the Sakshi and you are not uh, the persona of the waking state. Janaka asked Yajnavalkya, Hey Maharshi, I, I dreamt yesterday night in my sleep. I was a beggar. So who am I? Am I the king Janaka? Or am I the beggar of the dream? That is what he asked. Because he had a Swapna Viveka in him, he asked. Suppose we were uh, there, we would have dismissed the beggar of the dream state and assume uh, the king, uh, kingship of the waking state as real. But Janaka is a great jnani, he did not assume. He compared, while I was a beggar, that seemed to be real. As much real as uh, the kingship seems to be real now. Now which is real among the two? Am I the beggar dreaming that I am Janaka? Or am I the Janaka dreaming that I am beggar? That is the question he asked. Then Yajnivalkya told, you are neither. You forgot to sleep. <laughs> there is one more thing there. So, you are the Sakshi of the sleep. You are the Sakshi of the dream. You are the Sakshi of the waking state. Therefore, the lapse that you experience in sleep state is not the lapse of uh, uh, Atma. It is only the lapse of memory. So, the, the blankness of deep sleep is entirely due to the lack of due to the lack of specific memories. So, some analysis of the sleep state, and uh, so how come the the lapse of memory has happened? How come? The mind has become lapsed. How come? Because the, it is like uh, the sun is shining in the mirror. And now, for whatever reason, the door is closed. Therefore, sun is not shining in the mirror anymore. Only that much. Therefore, the sun of Atma is not shining in the mirror of mind in sleep. That is how it is happening. Therefore, in sleep, the real I is present. The false I, the persona I is not present. But the real I, which is the Sakshi, is indeed present. And therefore, that real I is Sat Sanmatraha. Now, when real I is present, Sanmatraha is present, why there, are, there is no specific knowledge, particular knowledge, what we call Vishesha Jnanam? Why the Vishesha Jnanam is missing? You see, I tell you, there is a light called polarized light. The polarized light you will not be able to see unless you put your eye directly in its path. You will not be able to see the polarized light because it is not dispersing in multiple directions, the polarized light. The light you see, you see, you put a battery light. The pencil of light is traveling in this direction from here to there. But you are standing here. You are not in the path of the pencil of light, but still you are able to see. Why? Because the light has a dispersion. It gets dispersed in multiple directions by the particles. But suppose the light is passing through vacuum, like in a laser, etc., they create a vacuum inside. 
and it is passing through vacuum you will not be able to see that light because there is nothing to disperse that light therefore the light of awareness the light of the sakshi is always there but there is no particular object to shine in that light there is no particular object why there is no object because what you call object it is the counterpart of an idea object is the counterpart of an idea and all all ideas are absent because in sleep the mind is closed so all ideas of the mind all thoughts of the mind are absent when the thoughts of the mind are absent their counterparts which are objects that are also absent and therefore there is no specific knowledge not because sakshi is absent but because the ideas corresponding to the objects are absent therefore when there is no specific knowledge you the, the you can conclude there is no specific knowledge therefore the light that illuminates this particular knowledge is absent that is one conclusion which is wrong conclusion that is the shunya vada or the light that illuminates is present but the thing to be illuminated is absent therefore you do not see the effect of that light that is the truth swami vivekananda you see i say vivekananda because i studied vivekananda and i see the depth of his vision he may not be teaching a prakarana grantha or whatever but he has his own vision you see how he described the object you know what is an object object is objection that is what an object is like you are watching the movie you see a hero heroine what is that hero on the film if it allows the light to flow freely you do not see any hero on the screen so the film differentially objects the light you got it therefore the objects that you see on the screen are objections only the objections are the objects the film differentially objects objects means uh, prevents it yartha objects uh, so the objection to the light that is how you see object similarly when sakshi chaitanyam is glowing something should object it something should obstruct it and whatever obstructs becomes the object and if there is nothing to obstruct there is no particular knowledge that doesn't mean the sakshi chaitanyam is not glowing anymore therefore in sleep you are in fact the real you are in sleep you should not give so much importance to the waking state you should learn to give some importance to the sleep state also and uh, you say you are attached people ask swami ji i am attached to the things of the world how to get rid of this attachment a genuine question then i ask are you attached in sleep you are not attached in sleep so what does it prove to you that is does it not prove to you that you are not attached at all you are imagining that you are attached it is the power of imagination that it seems real you question your attachment you sit in some quiet place and look at the attachment that you select one object select a diamond ring worth selecting so select a diamond ring or diamond necklace you select it select means you don't bring from the locker and all that that is not right <laughs> so you just examine it this diamond ring am i attached to it am i attached to it do i need it does it make me fulfilled fulfilled am i attached to it no i am not attached you will see that you are not attached so what you see seeing is knowing what you see you must prove to yourself
Anushthana Vedanta. See, oh, I am not attached to the diamond ring and therefore I keep it safely with myself. That is not Anushthana Vedanta, that is Bukish Vedanta. Anushthana Vedanta will be, you give away the diamond ring or give up the diamond ring or simply give the diamond ring. That is Anushthana Vedanta. To prove the point to yourself, you have to prove the point to yourself. A person told me, I am putting a car before your door tomorrow morning. I said, if you put it before my door, you take care of it. Because I am not going to take care of it, I am not going to travel by it. I will continue to travel by auto only. I don't want your car. I said that to him because I wanted to prove to myself that I am not attached to the car. In India, here car is nothing. In India, car is a very big thing. <laughs> so the point, not about me, generally I am saying, so I have to prove to myself that I am not attached. I have to, that is Anushthana Vedanta. Anushthana Vedanta is not like dumbbells. So, understand from the sleep experience that you are not attached. And prove it to yourself by breaking the bond of attachment. So, and uh, so we have covered the verse, only one more thing is there. Yaf pratyavijna yate. That pratyavijna, I have covered it. Pratyavijna means, you see, I tell you how. Soyan devadattaha. That is the pratyavijna illustration. This devadatta, I am devadattaha saha. This devadatta, devadatta is the name of a gentleman, is the one whom I saw ten years back. In India. Now he is in US and he is very elderly. But the Devadatta that I saw was in India and he was quite young. Now, what is Soyam Devadattaha? You see, Ayan Devadattaha, Ayan Devadattaha means this middle aged Devadatta in US. That is Ayam. Saha is that. Young, not middle aged, young Devadatta of India. How the Devadatta, the middle aged Devadatta of US can be same as the young Devadatta of India? Cannot be. Cannot be. How you see so much baggage you put around Devadatta, how they can be same? They cannot be same. So you simply say Devadatta, maybe you can say, maybe same, can become same. But so much baggage you put around Devadatta, middle aged Devadatta of US, young Devadatta of India. As long as you keep that India and US in place, there can be no sameness. As long as you keep the middle age and youth in place, there can be no sameness. The Devadatta is different from this Devadatta. Because middle age is different from youth and the US is different from India. So this baggage you have to remove. Okay, let us remove that baggage. US you remove. India also should remove. Middle age you remove. Youth also you remove. Now what remains? Devadatta, Devadatta. One Devadatta. This is the Pratyavijna. You got it? Now, the dream, Janaka's dream is the illustration. Janaka, the king, beggar of the dream state. Beggar has a name. Some, there, some silly name is there for the beggar. Now, both are the same. I, am the, I was the beggar in the dream. I am the king in the waking state. Both are same. That is the Pratyavijna. Pratyavijna is a foregone conclusion. It is the truth. Given truth it is. There is Pratyavijna. Like Soyan Devadattaha. So this Pratyavijna is valid. Not by keeping Janaka the king and the beggar of the dream intact. There can be no Pratyavijna. But there is a Pratyavijna. Therefore, the baggage around Janaka you have to remove. The baggage around the beggar of the dream world you have to remove. And the baggage of the sleep state also you have to remove. So, Janaka waking state, the Sakshi of the waking state experiences and waking person. 
the sakshi of the dream experiences and the dream person the sakshi of the sleep experience and no person no person you are not a person in sleep you are a no person and you know that sakshi so now pratyavijnana what is the pratyavijnana the no person sleep experience you remove keep the sakshi intact the dream state person dream experience you remove keep the sakshi intact the waking state person waking experience you remove keep the sakshi intact it is the same sakshi this is how the pratyavijnana operates therefore you are the sakshi you are not the person that you imagine yourself to be you are not that person you are the sakshi you you okay after all you cannot be what you imagine yourself to be how can you be what you imagine yourself to be you cannot be i will imagine so many things about me am i all that so 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 the, i can imagine oh i i enjoy kheer i have uh, consumed kheer very well it is so tasty there is kaju in it there is kismis in it so wonderful it is and now i imagine and open the eyes still i feel hungry so kheer khayenge kheer khayenge like that a song is there with gana bajana we sing for 10 minutes and still we remain hungry so therefore what you imagine is not real you imagine uh, you imagine so many things about yourself all of that is imagination god sends a new life into this world and i end up imagining i am a father some biological process is involved and you identify with the body and imagine that i am a father this imagination it will hurt the guy till he reaches the graveyard it is a shellium till he goes to the graveyard the relation between father and son can never be 100% happy in the best case scenario it is only 70 to 80% happy that is how it is the nature is like that so what a misfortune instead of being a centerless awareness you imagine yourself to be a person and put it in the place of center and suffer endlessly the whole life be the sakshi so you are that pure sat the pure being that is what you are you are the pratyavijna are you not saying pragaswapsam iti prabodha samaye when you wake up you declare i slept happily and fully relaxed and now i am did you ever examine why you are so relaxed after uh, uh sleep why should you be relaxed after sleep what should be the reason suppose you say somebody has massaged you in the airport for half an hour or one hour taking some 20 dollars or 30 dollars he massaged you and oh i am relaxed so now the relaxation is uh, having a cause massage is the cause of the relaxation some oil this and that now in sleep you relax even better what is the cause for that you explain to me what is the cause you have to think about it and therefore your own experience pragaswapsam iti prabodha samaye aswapsam so wonderful usage of the verb i slept ha- before till now so that experience i slept you say aswapsam aham aswapsam that aham cannot be mr johnson aham if the pratyavijna is working then aham cannot be mr johnson aham can should be something other than mr johnson that is the sakshi that sakshi you are and that sakshi the awareful awareness is also the same awareness in the preceptor in the guru because it is like the sun reflecting in multiple dew drops and that sakshi is atma and that is brahma shankara any number of times he described the atma as 
ಸಕಲ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಯ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ಆತ್ಮ 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 ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಜಹ ನಿತ್ಯ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಥಿಯರಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಬಟ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಸಕಲ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಯ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಅನುಷ್ಠಾನ ವೇದಾಂತ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಾರ್ಪಣಮಸ್ತು